Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the year three expectations. This is a new series of videos that I'm doing about how you can help your child, depending on what year group they're in. So this one's all about year three. So request by a subscriber. So I know somebody wanted to me to make a year three video. So here it is. Um, so let's get straight into it, shall we? Um, starting with reading. So um, and you're looking for a deeper level of comprehension as well. So develop positive attitudes to reading, obviously, um, again, looking at discussing a wide range of different types of reading, fiction, poetry, plays, nonfiction books. So really, you know, trying to give your child a wide reading diet at this point, not just stories, but all kinds of different texts. Um, you can use dictionaries to check meanings of words they don't know. Um, again, we've got a range of books here. Um, discussing words and phrases that capture the reader's interest. So thinking more deeply about a book and thinking about why um, the writer has chosen certain things and, and what the impact on the reader should be. So let's have a further look then, because as you go through the year groups, obviously these statements, which are taken from the national curriculum, become more detailed. Um, understand what they have read. So Again, really being able to tell you after they've read something, what it was about, who were the characters, where was it set, um, how do the characters' feelings and thoughts change throughout the book. So introducing this idea of a deeper level of inference, uh, moving on from year two, not just saying the character was sad because they were crying, but giving more detail about the reasons why they were upset and, and um, really understanding that at a deeper level than once you're in year three. Ideas drawn from more than one paragraph, so they're able to summarise longer parts of text now. They can tell you about a whole story, possibly, and summarise that into just the main points. Retrieve and record information. Um, but really, what you're looking for is now the children are in key stage two. So key stage one is year one and two, but year three is the beginning of their key stage two journey. And now they should be working on things that are going to support them when they do their year six SATs. So what happens in year three is you have sort of a lot of schools will do whole class reading lessons, which focus on these. And these are called the content domains. And these are specific reading skills. Um, some schools give them different, more child friendly names like Rex Retriever. I've seen um and they, they just make them more child friendly. But essentially, this is what the teacher is trying to teach the child. Um, and this is what you should be trying to help your child with as well when reading with them at home. So the content domain 2A is all about children knowing and understanding the meaning of different words and giving them strategies on how to work out the meanings of words they don't know. Not just looking at the dictionary, but actually reading around the word, um, swapping it for another word. Can they see any words within words that can help them? Um, so really trying to unpick that and building up their vocabulary. A lot of these questions, now they don't do any sort of tests in year three, um, but a lot of the word meaning questions will start with the phrase, find and copy a word that means. Okay, so that's that's word meaning. Retrieval, I know I spoke, spoke about this in the year two video as well. This is really them just retrieving the basic information from the text. So who are the characters, where is it taking place, when, when is it happening and what's going on? But knowing the different answers for these as well. So who, yes, it could be one person, but it could be a group of people. Where could be a variety of different places, not just always the name of a place. It could be a name of a county or a name of a country. When, again, that could be a date. It could be a time, specific time. It could be a month. It could be a day. Um, so just getting them to understand the different answers to retrieval questions that you can give. Summarizing main ideas and then the big one, which is making inferences, which these types of questions usually start with why or how. So if you were doing this at home, you might say, why do you think the character did this? Um, what was their reasons behind it? Or how do you think the character is feeling at this point in the text? And why do you think they're feeling that way? Getting them to have that really deep understanding of what the character's feelings and thoughts are. Why is this important? Well, when they get to year six, they'll do their SATs. And here I've included the content domains and then the percentage of questions that are, the children are asked uh, to answer um, from each of the content domains. So you can see from last year's SATs in year six, there was 18% of questions that were word meaning, 32% retrieval, 
and almost half of them were inference questions. So if you're working on reading at home with your child, it's really those three skills that you want to focus on. You can see the other content domains, um, they actually weren't covered at all. Prediction is an important one. Um, they're able to predict what's going to happen next based on what's happened so far. But, you know, those three reading skills, uh, word meaning, retrieval and inference, really tell you that the, ch the child has got a good understanding of the text. So that's where you probably want to focus on helping them. Books then for year three, um, again, I've included the role dialed because just like year two, um, you know, it's about developing a love for reading and there's no better books to do that than with the Roald Dahl books. And you get a variety of different ones with Roald Dahl. You know, you've got the Enormous Crocodile, which is a little bit easier. And then you've got more tricky ones like um, Danny the Champion of the World, which is a personal favourite of mine. Other books that I've taught with in year three, um, your schools might do these. Ice Palace is a popular one um, about a boy's journey, a real traditional narrative story. Um, Fly Eagle Fly, um, Tales from Different Countries. This is an African tale. The Village That Vanished, another African tale. So really um, giving them lots of different types of books and texts to read, including nonfiction, which I haven't included here, but that's also a really important genre. Um, right, let's move on to writing then. So year three writing. Um, year three tends to be a tricky year. Uh, children tend to not make as much progress going into year three. And that's because the curriculum is asking a lot more of them, um, not just in the content, but the concepts they're asking them to grapple with. Um, here we've got just the first part, which is spelling. Um, and in year two, they learn about possessive apostrophes. And in year three, they're introduced to this idea of plural possession. So when something belongs to a group of people, it's my parents' house. Um, that is, you know, talking about the apostrophe coming after the S um, because it belongs to a group of people. So that's that plur the idea of plural possession comes in at year three. Um, what else comes in? They just have to learn quite a few different spelling rules um, that are taught at this point. Um, and then there's also, which I've just realized that I've missed out here, is the common exception words. So there are new common exception words for year three and four. Um, I showed you the ones in the year one and two video. That there are new ones for year three and four. So perhaps I'll include those in the description. So apologies, I've missed those out here. Writing composition then. What does the writing need to look like and sound like in year three? Again, they'll experience in school writing a variety of different genres, um, creating characters, settings and plots. Um, they're going to be, you know, making sure that their writing flows and is cohesive and makes sense, most importantly. Proofreading, spelling and punctuation errors. Um, when they're writing nonfiction, this idea of using headings and subheadings to organise information. Um, this is where the specifics come in. So the big things in year three for writing are, again, a range of conjunctions. So really using these subordinating conjunctions accurately, when, if, though, although, and because. Um, using adverbs, you know, to describe verbs, give you more detail about how things are done, like the word slowly, you know, is an example of an adverb because it describes how you would do something. Um, you've got this idea that comes in here, and this is one that teachers always joke about. Fronted adverbials, what are they? Well, I'm going to just tell you about them in a minute. And then we've got um, commas after front adverbials. OK, so using a comma afterwards. And then the idea of speech comes in. Um, you can see possessive plural nouns we've talked about. Yeah, this idea of using speech marks in the writing comes in at year three. Um, so front adverbials, what are they? Well, essentially, they were before they were previously known as sentence starters. Um, but they usually are used at the beginnings of sentences and they can describe how something is done, where it's happening or when it's happening. So, you know, in year two, they might have had next, after, then. Um, and now we're looking at exploring ones that are a bit more sophisticated and more detailed. So we're talking about when after lunch, before sunrise, during the match, when I finish my homework. Um, the where ones were really giving the reader some detail about where things are happening in front of the museum, on the table, in the garden. 
And then how is a way of starting where you're describing how something was done. As quick as a flash, the boy jumped um, out of the wardrobe. Nervously, the boy walked into the head teacher's office. So these are front adverbials. And in year three, they have to try and use a comma after them, as you can see with all of them here. But interestingly enough, it doesn't always have to be accurate. So if they miss a comma out now and again, that's okay for year three. In year four, it has to be much more accurate. So that's front adverbials. Then we get introduced in year three to this idea of present perfect tense. So in year two, they will have written in the past tense in, and they would have written in simple present tense. Then we've got this idea of present perfect tense, which, you know, seems a bit much for year three. OK, but this is when they should learn it, because in year six, in the grammar test and in their writing, they have to be able to know what this is and identify it. So if it doesn't get taught in year three, it's a big gap that the year six teachers have to make up. So this idea of present perfect tense is that things that are um, that have happened in the past, but maybe still well are still happening. So you get the idea of using these ED verbs, which should tell you that it's past tense. But then that's used alongside the words have and has. So um, he has worked at the same company for 10 years. OK, he still works there, but he has worked there previously as well. So this is something that's happened in the past and is still happening. So we use the present perfect tense. Um, they have eat. They have already eaten dinner. Um, this is to say that they've had their dinner but maybe some of them are still finishing it. He has won many awards for his writing. Um, so he's won many awards in the past, but in the future, I'm sure he'll win more. So this is the idea that, you know, it's happened in the past, but is still happening. It's continuing. And they call this present perfect tense. Now, yes, introduce it to your child. Yes, talk to them about it. However, you know, they're, they're likely to use it without even realizing, but they do need to identify it with the words have and has, okay? Um, and then handwriting in the previous video, I talked about the importance of correcting your child's pencil grip. It really is important guys. And if you don't do it, if you haven't done it already, check the tripod grip, because it's really going to hold your child back with their handwriting if they haven't got the pencil held right. And in year three, then you're really focusing on this idea of cursive handwriting, where we're really trying to join all of the letters. You can see in year two, they may have had the lead in. And now we're looking at trying to join all the letters together. So, yeah, it is important. I know that all children like to join their handwriting, but do encourage them to do so. So let's have a look at some examples of year three writing. And I apologize for the quality of these pieces. Um, it's just these are the ones that I was scanning and finding and, and it's not scanned in so well. But we can have a look at the writing um, together now. OK, so looking at this writing, I can see that we already have... Um, Five years after the dinosaurs were extinct. So this is a front adverbial. It's telling us when. OK, so you've got that there and you've got the comma. There lived a hardworking person who was known as Wee Lang. Wee Lang was a helpful and caring person. So we've got an expanded noun phrase. But unfortunately, so we've got uh, conjunctions here was the opposite. This meant that he was selfish and bossy. Again, a conjunction used there. Um, owned a guy gentic has, but sadly, so you've got the use of adverbs. We learn how to you work for his horrible boss, this horrible man. So that is what's called a pronoun. So instead of saying his boss, his boss, his boss, they've used this horrible man. So in year three, they're going to start to use these pronouns um, to avoid repetition, to avoid repeating the same um, thing over and over again. Uh, the city, um, big city in China, the city was always busy and most of the time it was colourful, except when darkness came. When the darkness came, it was as dark as charcoal. So actually, there's a missing comma here when darkness came, but that's fine because in year three, you're going to have the occasional missing comma after a front adverbial. One magical day and you can see they have included their comma in year four. You'd be looking for more accuracy with these, but in year three, you can get away with them. And then further down, we can see the use of some speech marks. Get me my best author to write me a best book in the world. He started to laugh. So you've got the speech marks used there at the end and there at the beginning. They've used the capital letter in the speech marks and they've used this reporting clause, started to laugh loudly and another adverb. So that's what year three writing might look like with some of those things I've talked about already. Let's have a look at another one. Um, as at sunrise, so again, you've got your front adverbial there. The people go get up and go to the park. 
Then the wind swooped around the city, around and a uh, broad brimmed hot arrival. Uh, the yellow sun was uh, hot. The yellow sun hot was swishing and swooping. Uh, Mrs. The people watched. Yellow hot flew under the bridge. Um, so this is a type of writing sequence, an independent sequence of writing. Not seen this type of writing before, but here he wondered who is she, and then we've got a question mark. Should I talk to her? The correct use of the punctuation inside the speech marks. Now, in year three, they're sort of really beginning to be introduced as to these uh, speech marks. So that you're not expecting the children to use them accurately all the time to be writing an expected level in year three. Just um, the occasional slip up is fine. You're looking at more accuracy using speech marks would come in at year four. Another piece of writing here, we can see peeking around carefully and anxiously. Lovely adverb, comma afterwards there. Um, he sobbed and sulked, he whined desperate, he tried to scan the streets. So this also, the scan the streets, he's not trying to look in the streets. Quite a nice use of a different type of verb there, um, which is say, showing that it's slightly, slightly different from year two writing. Um, damaged, broken heart, another expanded noun phrase. You've got the couldn't, you've got the contracted spellings here. Um, and then again, you've got some speech marks. Here, 66, no, it can't be read right. Okay, and then you've got a question mark and another speech marks to end there. Um, again, you know, you, you, the speech marks don't have to look a certain way. You can see this child's use them like this, but they've used them accurately. Um, so that's what year three writing um, might look like. Okay, um, bear in mind that that's the end of year three. Okay, that's what you're looking for at the end of year three. So let's move on to maths um, and maths in year three. I like to remember it is year three. It's all about three digit numbers and hundreds, tens and ones. In year two, you're only looking at tens and ones. Here, we're introduced to the hundreds column in year three. So they're always looking at three digit numbers, numbers up to 1000. So they need to be able to compare numbers, say which one's greater, greater than and less than up to a thousand. They need to be able to um, break down a three digit number, partition it is the word that they'll use into the how many hundreds, tens and ones there are in that number. Um, and it's all about using these three digit numbers. They're also required to count up in multiples of 50 and 100. And also be able to count up in multiples of four and eight as well. Um, so that's number and place value. Addition of subtraction. Again, it's all about three digit numbers in year three. So your child should be able to add and subtract a three digit number. This is a um, column method, but they might use a different method in school. Um, three digit numbers using a formal written method. I don't see any issue with them learning column method in year three. Um, we did it slightly different when I was in year three, just so they could see how many hundreds, tens and ones they were adding. Uh, but as long as their place value is secure, then I don't see any reason why they can't. Um, so they need to be able to add ones to a three digit number, tens to a three digit number, and hundreds to a three digit number. Multiplication division, um, again, we're looking at three digit numbers, um, but we really only in year three look at the, in this way, we're multiplying a three digit number by a one digit number. So to give you an example, that's the grid method, which is one way they might learn to, to solve these, but there's also this column formal written method here, which is six times three is 18. So we put the eight down and carry the one. And we do four times three is 12, plus that one is 13, three down, carry the one, and then one times three is three, plus one is four. So the children being able to do that and knowing their three, four, and eight multiplication tables. So in year two, it was two, five, and 10. In year three, you need to know your three, fours, and eights. But I will say this, by the end of year four, which is in a year after this, they need to know them all. So I would get them to learn three, fours and eights, but I wouldn't hold them back. You know, start looking at the sixes and the sevens and the nines. So they so they have an idea of those before they get into year four. Um, number fractions. So in year three, again, I talked about this. Um, you do see a slight dip in children's achievement in year three, just because there's so much content and they're introduced to so many different types of tricky concepts. And it's in year three, they're first introduced to numbers less than zero and this idea of having tenths. 
So between zero and one, there are these tenths. And to write them as a fraction is one tenth, two, two over 10, three over 10. But you can also write them as 0 0.1, 0 0.3. So it's their first introduction really into decimal numbers. Um, other things to know about fractions is that they'll be learning to add fractions with different with the same denominator, sorry. So that makes it easier for them because you keep the denominators the same. In this, in this example, one quarter add one quarter is two quarters. You're only adding the numerators. So another example is here, five, five seventh plus one seventh is six seventh. So that's another example of adding fractions with the same denominator. Um, but yeah, tenths is the big one and then adding fractions with the same denominator. Again, measurement, you get some new concepts which are quite tricky. You've got Roman numerals come up in year three, the idea of a 24 hour clock, which is really hard for them to, to grasp. Um, and then the idea of perimeter, the concept of perimeter comes up, um, but only in the context of simple shapes, like, a, like this rectangle here, perimeter being the distance around the edge of the shape. So to work it out, you would add two, add three, add two, add three, or three and three and two and two. So the big other things in measurement would be Roman numerals, perimeter, and 24 hour clock. And then geometry properties of shape uh, introduced to this concept of the angle and mainly a right angle. They don't look at any other types of angles in year three, but that a right angle is 90 degrees, that you can have a quarter turn, which is one right angle, two right angles is a half turn, and then three right angles, three quarter turn, and all the way around. Um, and you may talk about the 90 degrees, 180 degrees in year three. It might come up as, as you introduce this concept, but they don't need to know that at this point. And then this idea of horizontal and vertical lines and that children being able to identify those 2D and 3D shapes. Again, just following on from year two and what they've learned, but then looking at identifying a shape in a different orientation so that this, which sometimes the children will call a diamond, is actually still a square but it's in a different orientation. It's been turned around. So that's a misconception to look out for. Right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed that video. Uh, I hope it answered some of your questions and it enlightened you to what the children are gonna learn in year three. It is a tricky year group. There's a lot of new concepts that are introduced. If you found the video useful, please leave a like. Very much appreciate that. Um, would really support the channel and subscribe to the channel for more videos on primary education. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.